Hello and welcome to the Majlis, the podcast by Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty, focusing on Central Asia. I'm Mohammed Tahir, your host here in Washington, D.C. After years of pause, Central Asian leaders, except the Turkmen president, are coming together in the same room to discuss matters of regional importance without the presence of any foreigner. In the uh, history of Central Asia, such gatherings are a rare occurrence, and the last of which took place in 2009 with limited agenda of saving Aral. Though the Turkmen leader will be out, uh, the March 15 summit is indeed a historical development, so on today's Majlis we plan to discuss its importance, the agenda, the driving factor in absence of the Turkmen leader. To discuss this, I am joined by Ambassador Bakit Bashimov, lecturer at the Northeastern University and previously held numerous positions in the Kyrgyz government. Farouk Yusufi, the director of Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty's Turkmen service, is joining us from Prague alongside uh, Bruce Panier, who is the editor of Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty's Central Asia blog called Kishlago Wazi. Gentlemen, welcome on board. Thank, Thank you for the invitation. Very Thank nice you. to have you. So the day is almost here, the March 15, when Nazarbayev will chair the meeting of Central Asian leaders after a long time, though I'm a little confused about the time frame. Is it the uh, first gathering after nine years or 13 years? I see two in different information circulating on this. No, I mean, they met for the ROC summit in 2009, hmm. so that's, that's definitely Oh, okay. Do we know what they are going to talk about? I assume that the agent of this meeting will be just uh, get together, uh, discuss uh, uh, common issues, and uh, understand the positions of um, uh, each uh, state, and uh, to uh, just think how they can together uh, promote, uh, le- let's say, the common uh, agenda. And... Uh, after the uh, just a uh, new development in Uzbekistan, and uh, when uh, President Nazarbayev uh, met with the uh, new president of Uzbekistan, Mizuyev, after the just succession of power in Kyrgyzstan, when a uh, new president, uh, Soronbay Jainbekov, just uh, met uh, with, with uh, Kazakhstan. Mm. Uh, it seems to me it's time uh, for all the, uh, Central Asian uh, leaders to uh, get together and discuss uh, very important issues. Yeah, Bucket, is it your own assumption or you have seen uh, these agendas somewhere written? I uh, assume on the base of my information because... Uh, uh, when I first got this information about the uh, gathering, hmm. uh, for me, the first question was why they decided to meet and uh, uh, how to understand this is a long period of uh, absence of this kind of um, uh, gathering. And uh, uh, through my network, I decided to clarify and therefore hmm. uh, my assumption based on the information from my network. No, oh, okay. Bruce, we were earlier talking about that there is no written agenda yet, uh, at least publicly available uh, on this summit, and summit is about to start next week. So what is all this secrecy about? And we were lucky enough that we have Ambassador Bakit on this. He brought some uh, inside information on the table. But but other than that, there is nothing available on public, is it? I mean, there's not any information out there on public about it. But, you know, I would mention that this, you know, uh, like Bakit's kind kind of got to... You know, they haven't, one, they haven't been, all been together in a very, very long time. And we have two new faces here since the last time they, they yeah. met, of course. Uh, you know, Mirzioyev in Uzbekistan and, and Jay and Bekov in Kyrgyzstan. So um, it would be a good chance for, obviously, it would be better if all five got together, but even the four to get together uh, with, with two new leaders there so that they can kind of discuss, what, you know, where's our common ground and, and uh, what projects or, or policies could we pursue, you know, together. Uh, you know, one thing I, w- I would say that they probably will do a lot of talking about is the unified restoration of the unified energy grid. There's been talk from different countries about that, but they haven't had a formal agreement. And I would imagine this is one of the easier issues that they could find agreement on. Okay. Uh, let's see. So, uh, Farouk, you are wearing two hats here today. One is that uh, Turkmenistan, the other, the country where you originally belong to, Uzbekistan. And Uzbekistan is obviously an important topic here because Mirziyoyev is the initiator of this discussion, although it's happening in Kazakhstan. So what is in his mind? What are the objectives that he is going with to the summit? Yeah, it's very interesting that it took a death of a president for more efforts to 
to be put the integration of the Central Asian nations. Mm. And it seems that you are right that President Mirziyoyev is, if not the champion, but at least the uh, very vital part of this uh, activated cooperation. And it is uh, for the five uh, Central Asian republics, at least for uh, countries like uh, Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan, it is very important to discuss coordination of their policies, uh, especially uh, keeping in mind what's happening in uh, Russia, especially when Putin openly is saying that he regrets collapse of Soviet Union and only thing that he would fix uh, today if he had power is to restore uh, the Soviet Union and in his last address he openly and without any regard to uh, to his uh, uh, Central Asian counterparts said that with the collapse of Soviet Union Russia lost 45% of its uh, territory Russia lost 40% of its population I mean, he was talking like uh, as if uh, uh, Central Asian countries or, or and other uh, former Soviet countries were part of Russia, and uh, I think it it is very symbolic. And I hope that uh, leaders of the Central Asian countries, when they meet in Astana uh, next week, will uh, somehow keep this uh, keep this issue in their mind. And. Mm. Today, a very important meeting is taking place in uh, Dushanbe. Yeah. This, uh, this meeting has uh, importance to other Central Asian countries too, when uh, the two countries who were not very friendly to each other when uh, Uzbekistan was ruled by uh, the former president, Islam Karimov, are celebrating their rapprochement. Um, they are... If you see the streets of uh, Dushanbe, from the pictures what we see, everyone is happy, everyone is celebrating, everyone is greeting each other, and everyone is talking about eternal uh, friendship between the two nations. I mean, we, we haven't seen this kind of uh, celebration of friendship between any countries of, of the region for many, many years. Obviously, it's a, a huge development that I think I was also reading another news coming out from today's discussion between Mirzi Ayev and Rahman that they just decided to cancel visa for the duration of 30 days for the citizens of these two countries, which is, which is, if that's true, huge development. But under the surface, there are also major issues between these two countries. Bruce, you mentioned unified electric grid, right? In related to that is also you have the Rogon Dam, long-standing problem with the water sharing issue in Central Asia. What do you think, how much of the agenda will be uh, covered by these kind of issues, which has been the long standing and also Uzbekistan has issues with Kyrgyzstan uh, on the other side. Now, I'm glad you brought that up because that really is one of the issues that they, they have to talk about. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, they, they in public anyway, Mirzi Oyev makes it look like, you know, every, everything is okay and they're kind of moving in the, the right direction. And, and just for a minute, I would notice, note that although he, he Mirzi Oyev said today that uh, he has no opposition to Rogun and, and Uzbekistan would even like to join in. In fact, Rogun is about to be launched before the end of the year anyway, so there's nothing he can do about it at this point. But that makes it all the more important that they do discuss water issues. Um, you know, Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan are downstream, so this is really important for them. Uh, and Kyrgyzstan and, and Tajikistan have legitimate interests in developing their own hydropower industry. So it, it's something that's got to be on the table. I, I wouldn't expect there would be any solution to that at this summit, but it would be good if they would get that out and discuss it. Mm -hmm. When it comes to uh, Kyrgyzstan bucket, what are the underlying issues between Uzbekistan and Kyrgyzstan and what you expect to be discussed in relation to that in the upcoming summit? Before that, I would like to explain how I understand why Mr. has decided to initiate this meeting yeah. and uh, why I think that Astana is the right place to have this kind of uh, meeting. First of all, Mr. Uh, uh, spent about 15 years during uh, Karimov's times as a prime minister. And uh, uh, analyzing uh, his behavior, I see that he uh, just uh, a character comprised from two big things. First, uh, he is a very pragmatic player. And uh, uh, secondly, he uses uh, highly emotional appeals in order to convince the public on the uh, necessity of his uh, reforms uh, and so on. As a, a pragmatic person, 
and uh, who knows in detail economy of Uzbekistan, uh, he would like to initiate the regional trade and uh, he would like to increase export of Uzbek goods. Therefore, he would like to resolve the border issues and to let the free flow of the people and the goods uh, through the borders of these uh, states. And uh, after that, we can see that, uh, several um, alarming factors. First, decline of Russia, and uh, uh, therefore it's uncertain how this decline can affect the economies of these uh, countries. Uh, we can see the, uh, just the development of uh, uh, China's uh, one belt, one road strategy. And it is important for Central Asian countries to just discuss this issue and to uh, probably collectively make uh, Chinese project in Central Asia more transparent and more uh, just inclusive, uh, because we know that uh, China uh, invests uh, overwhelmingly uh, to uh, its own companies uh, and less to. And the third trend is the uh, decline of the supply of uh, energy, oil and gas uh, to China, uh, to Russia. And therefore, this kind of uh, factors, uh, uh, it seems to me, push the uh, Uzbek leader to go to Kazakhstan with the Nazarbayev to, to discuss these issues and after that discuss with the Tajik and uh, Kyrgyz leader the possibilities to increase the uh, trade between these uh, countries. Mm. Regarding Kyrgyzstan, mm. uh, Kyrgyzstan uh, economically in a very uh, desperate situation. For Kyrgyzstan, it's so important to diversify economy and to do something in order to develop service uh, sector and after that uh, some uh, manufacturing uh, sectors. Uh, because uh, the uh, gold as the main uh, export of uh, Kyrgyzstan uh, is uh, decreasing, and uh, uh, therefore uh, Kyrgyzstan as well as Tajikistan highly dependent on remittances. In the long term, it is not uh, a good uh, trend uh, for the economy of Kyrgyzstan. That's why I think President uh, Jane Beck, it's important to think how he uh, can uh, promote the goods of Kyrgyzstan uh, within the Central Asia. Uh, listening to all these uh, comments, uh, it looks like that they want to improve trade. They want to uh, ease the uh, people-to-people interaction. Looks like a very innocent agenda. Then, uh, Farooq, why Berdu Muhammadov is not there? Oh, Berdu Muhammadov, I think um, if, if this meeting uh, happened two weeks ago, or maybe if it happened three weeks afterwards, I think he would very much want to go there. The main uh, reason for his skipping the, the this meeting is the upcoming parliamentary elections. Of course, I mean, everyone knows that Turkmen parliament is idle and uh, no one uh, believes that it, it decides anything. But uh, in these elections, his son is going to take part and I think he wants to make sure that everything goes smoothly, given that the dire economic situation and uh, people's unhappiness with uh, what's happening uh, in in Turkmenistan is a major concern for the president. Uh, A part of the problem is the the, uh, these uh, economic uh, concerns, economic problems induced him to stay in the country, not to leave the country. Uh, in these uh, important times and uh, to be there, God forbid, uh, if uh, something happens, because as we hear, uh, Turkmen people's patience is uh, uh, running out because uh, every day we report about people uh, storming into state-owned shops in order to uh, take flour, um, because flour is very scarce in in Turkmenistan at the moment, or people, um, women uh, blocking a highway between uh, uh, two towns because uh, and demanding proper provision of uh, basic staples like uh, uh, cottonseed oil and flour. So I think the main reason for him staying home is uh, his, uh, his concerns. Otherwise, I think there was no reason for him to skip this important meeting because first I mean, he, there would be a lot of uh, things to discuss with with his neighbors there are no personal problems between um, uh, Berdu Muhammadov and any uh, of the presidents and 
this is not one of those CIS meetings or other kind of bigger uh, international meetings that he usually shuns. So, um, and it would be a very, very good uh, meeting um, for him to ask for some support from from his uh, closest neighbors. Bruce, you had a story on this. What's your interpretation of Berdi Muhammad escaping this gathering? And also, does it matter for the participating countries that Turkmenistan is missing from the discussion? I agree with everything Baruch said there, you know, and I mentioned in the, some of that stuff in the, in the paper I wrote. I, I don't know exactly why he wouldn't go to something like this. Even, you know, Farouk said that they're, they're having parliamentary elections, but everyone knows their parliament's a joke. Yeah. Uh, but they do have some serious socioeconomic problems in the country that they've never seen before. That might worry him a little bit. You know, that said, at least they're sending a delegation. You know, the Speaker of Parliament is going to lead the, the delegation to go. So, So they are participating. There was a lot of meetings of the Central Asian heads minus Turkmenistan. But I mean, Turkmenistan, you know, in the past, but Turkmenistan didn't even send any representatives at all. It was just the other four presidents. And it was understood from the start that that was all it would be. So, you know, you could look at the fact that they're sending a parliamentary delegation as at least a positive sign that they, you know, that they're not excluding themselves from the whole process of, of hopefully regional cooperation. But on the other hand, You know, everyone knows that that um, Berdi Mukhamedov makes all the decisions. So if the the four presidents there want to sign an agreement, like I, I suggested, possibly the restoration of the unified energy grid, you can't really do that without Berdi Mukhamedov because you know no decision is final until he makes it final. So even the Speaker of Parliament, I don't think, would have the authority to sign on to a five party agreement at the at the summit, and that's a shame because I, I'm sure they want to have something to show at the end. Uh, and they will anyway. Uh, but, you know, for, for all of them getting together and here's progress and here's these agreements we signed as an example of, of how our new cooperation can work. And it will be very, very interesting and uh, to see how awkward it will look for the uh, head of the parliament who doesn't have even a nominal power in Turkmenistan to be sitting and talking with uh, four other presidents who are quite powerful in in their uh, rel- related country yeah may, may it's something i uh, for me it's not surprise that uh, the second turkmen president is uh, staying away from central issues mm. uh, firstly this mental map central asia was uh, artificially constructed you know by the bolsheviks and uh, uh, today if you see uh, at the economy of uzbekistan trade balance, uh, export and import destinations, uh, you can see that uh, Central Asia, Kazakhstan, uh, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan and Uzbekistan play no role in the trade of Turkmenistan, no role. Among the, let's say, first uh, destinations uh, of Turkmen import or uh, export, Kazakhstan, but Kazakhstan's uh, share comprises a little bit more than 2%. And therefore, it seems to me that Turkmen uh, president believes that the uh, TAPI uh, uh, project, uh, uh, which is a pipeline to South Asia, and uh, supply of uh, gas to China and to Turkey, it seems to me he recognizes the realities of a uh, uh, new uh, economic situation. When uh, Turkmenistan would like to be close to Middle East, Uh, to South uh, Asian countries, uh, Iran, and to find its own niche uh, in this place, uh, staying away from uh, Central Asian issues. Uh, I am asking uh, why Turkmenistan should be interested in a close uh, relations with Central Asian states. Because at the moment, Turkmenistan is going through the what people call the worst economic crisis uh, since it's gained independence. And it would be very much beneficial for Turkmenistan to come and talk with his uh, Central Asian counterparts and ask them for help. I mean, behind closed doors, like uh, off the record conversations, I, I think it would be very logical and very common sense move on the part of the uh, Turkmen president. Okay. Uh, who are able to help and how these countries can uh, help? Kazakhstan in a better shape, but uh, Kazakhstan has not uh, financial resources to uh, help to Turkmenistan. And the situation in Turkmenistan is uh, generated 
uh, by the uh, terrible governance. And we know about very exotic behavior of the Turkmen yeah. uh, president. But if we look at the trade of uh, Turkmenistan, we can see that among uh, export destination, uh, it's uh, China. Uh, and after we can see Afghanistan, Turkey, and no uh, Central Asia. Mm, to increase export uh, to Central Asia, Turkmenistan should fit how, what kind of goods uh, Turkmenistan to, can supply, what kind of comparative uh, advantage uh, Turkmenistan has in this region. Other than uh, Turkmenistan, obviously, there are lots of uh, other issues that will be uh, on the agenda, will be discussed. Although it's not public, but uh, what the panel has said is the improving trade will be one of them in cross-border people. The people activity, unified energy uh, distribution might be one of the agenda items and also maybe water sharing you know, all these things. Now, these are the issues and which will not be discussed first time in such a gathering, but whenever they they were discussed, they, they proved to be uh, bigger than mountain. So discussion went nowhere in many of those uh, agendas for years. Since they are resuming their group discussion, what are the chances that this time it will be any different? In how do the smaller countries look into this initiative put forward by one major country and is held in another major Central Asian country? And why it is a good time to speak about all these issues? We will continue Majlis talking about this and many other questions shortly. Hey everyone, before we get into the second part of the show, just a quick reminder that if you really like Majlis podcast, there's a real chance that you will also like my other radio show that's called Gandhara podcast. The show discusses latest developments in Pakistan and Afghanistan from local perspective. And the podcast is published in every second week on Radio Free Europe Radio Liberty's Gandhara website. It's a totally must follow discussion for foreign policy nerds with interest in the region. First, let me recap the debate that today on Majlis, Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty, Central Asia podcast. We are discussing the forthcoming Central Asia summit in the light of ups and downs in bilateral and regional relations among the countries in Central Asia. Joining me in the discussion are Ambassador Abakit Bashimov, lecturer at the Northeastern University, and uh, he has previously held numerous positions in the Kyrgyz government. Farouk Yusupi, director of Arab Yarel's Turkmen Service, is joining us, and also Bruce Panier, editor of Radio for Europe, Radio Liberties, Central Asia blog. Kishlok Uwazi is with us today. Gentlemen, welcome back to the Majlis. Now, Bruce, maybe we can start with you. Uh, so, to discuss all these issues that we think will be discussed, why it's a good time for such a gathering? Well, I mean, we do have, you know, again, that Mirziyoyev is, is a huge part of this. It's new mm. leadership in Uzbekistan. There's mm. opportunities present now that just haven't been there. Yeah. Since 1991, um, a lot of the things that went wrong with earlier meetings or attempts oh. at cooperations were were mainly, I think, um, because of personality conflicts uh, among the leaders of the Central Asian countries. And, and, and really, the center of that was Islam Karimov. Yeah. He just couldn't seem to get along with a lot of people. You know, I mean, Niazov, of course, kept away from everybody. So anytime you needed to make a deal, you know, and of course, geographically, we know Uzbekistan's right in the center of Central Asia. You can't do a lot if Uzbekistan is not willing to cooperate. And that was difficult. Uh, Karimov had this idea that his country was was the most important in Central Asia uh, and that uh, anything that had to be decided should not be decided without him having huge input in it, if not uh, them actually adopting his decision. And it made it hard to deal with, with him um, uh, you know, there were times where he it, it changed from time to time. Admittedly, if there was a security threat, he was much more uh, amenable to cooperation in mm-hmm. Central Asia. But generally speaking, uh, he wanted everything in Central Asia to run his way. Mm. You know, these agenda items, we will see where how it will end up. Probably we will be talking about the same topic next week uh, on the Majlis too. But apart from the agenda items and apart from the ability that the countries, the leaders could resolve this, looking into the history of uh, bilateral or the regional relations in Central Asia, Uzbekistan's ambition to be the regional leader in Central Asia itself has been the one of the main challenges which kept countries apart. Uh, now, very fact that Tashkent is behind this summit, 
Isn't this enough for smaller countries to remain suspicious that maybe Uzbekistan is again trying to dominate the region? Um, next door, Kyrgyzstan, Bakit, what do you say? I think reasons for the suspicions uh, are slim, and uh, uh, I don't think that uh, leaders should uh, be obsessed by this uh, old uh, suspicion. Uh, among four uh, leaders uh, of the uh, upcoming event, we have at least three who are willing to push forward the agenda of cooperation and who would like just to get together and uh, uh, try to understand how they can uh, do things better together. Uh, we have a, a Kazakh leader who are willing to just uh, uh, improve cooperation. We have Uzbek uh, uh, leader who would like just to make reforms in his own country and to make his country more transparent. And he would like just to push uh, uh, trade within the Central Asia. And uh, the Kyrgyz president, who has a political will just to uh, support their cooperation. Therefore, it is important for the leaders just to uh, leave behind all this kind of suspicion. Because uh, cooperation anyway is better. And all countries will uh, benefit. But they, uh, of course, should uh, think more pragmatically how they can do or better together. Yeah, the, you know, the, the idea of what they should is, uh, you put it nicely, Bucket, but again, it was part of the history, isn't it, Bruce? Like, concerned by some of the smaller countries. I know it from Turkmenistan. Niazov was concerned about being dominated by a huge neighbor. This was the perception in the region. Did it disappear? Or did Uzbekistan give up the claim of the regional leadership? Well, there's got to be some suspicions on, on the parts of all the neighbors about what Uzbekistan is doing. I, I think all of them are relieved that they can, there's a person leading Uzbekistan that they can talk to uh, and not be yelled at. So, uh, so I can see where they're trying to make the best of this and, um, you know, and see if they can't push forward regional cooperation while the opportunity presents itself. Now, I'll also say that, uh, you know, I'll give them a little credit for some maturity. We're 26 years down the road here after mm. independence. And, of course, when, when they were all, you know, in the early years of independence, they probably tended to view Uzbekistan with a lot more suspicion anyway, since all of them were trying to get themselves on their feet, so to speak, and everything like that. Um, you know, B- Bakit mentioned China and um, and Farouk mentioned Russia. And, and this is something also that maybe they should think about uh, mm. alone. Individually, they don't have much chance of, of resisting Russia or China's will, albeit in different forms, economic uh, or security. So it would make sense for them to get together, if nothing else, and, and say, you know, we are Central Asian and we can get regional cooperation. And, and we won't let China steal everything, all our energy resources uh, and pack it away, you know, without getting something substantial in return. And we won't let Russia dictate to us about security matters when perhaps we can come up with some solutions on our own uh, and not be dependent upon the, the former colonial master. Mm. Uh, I would like to add why I said it's important for the leaders to leave behind uh, suspicion because Central Asia is getting more diverse. Uh, if you look at a recent picture, Kazakhstan shifted into a Latin alphabet and uh, in the next uh, few years, Kazakhstan with Uzbekistan will be two uh, Latin alphabet-based countries. Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan uh, were members of Russian-led uh, Eurasian Economic Union. And also they are uh, members of uh, CSTO. Uzbekistan out of these uh, blocks and uh, unions. And uh, Tajikistan being the part of CSTO is out of the Eurasian Economic Union. And Turkmenistan completely uh, neutral. Therefore, they are getting more diverse, and therefore, will a political will of leaders to uh, promote cooperation and to find the common agenda and to understand how they can collectively just uh, uh, design common project of development, uh, very important. If they, for instance, will be suspicious that Uzbekistan's intention is to be the leader, I don't think that is a rational attitude because uh, Uzbekistan is far behind of Kazakhstan. And for Uzbekistan, with a large population, with a relatively developed economy, and uh, with uh, just uh, dependence on uh, remittances, and uh, with uh, uh, difficulties in promoting uh, export, 
uh, it's not the time to think about the leadership in the region. It's time to think how to make the economy of Uzbekistan better. But uh, I agree, uh, Mohammed, with one issue because it is more a deep topic. What will uh, happen uh, if Uzbekistan will improve its economy, increase its uh, export, uh, and uh, try to push forward its uh, uh, own political uh, ambitions? It is uh, another topic. And uh, uh, what's the guarantee that it will not going forward? It's impossible to understand the deep intentions. Mm-hmm. And, uh, mm-hmm. But what I see today, it's a deal of a Uzbek leader just to promote a regional trade and to open Uzbekistan for uh, all neighboring countries. I support this uh, trend uh, in his policy. Yeah, yeah and, I, and I would also like to add that... Um, Mirziyaev, any leader who comes in, in future, I mean, they will know that what happened to Uzbekistan when it had the ambitions under former president. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was a closed country, uh, economy was not doing very well, yeah. and Karimov was, I think, probably the most hated among the presidents of the Central Asian countries by the public and among the uh, uh, the counterparts themselves. And I think acting with uh, common sense and, and wisely and uh, forgetting about this kind of uh, leadership ambitions, um, what does a leadership bring to any country? It will bring nothing more than uh, being isolated. And the people, uh, and uh, Mirziyaev knows it, and I think and I hope that uh, other presidents who will come in the future will know uh, what happened mm. to the region and to each country mm. when they had this kind of, I would say, silly ambitions. Okay, uh, these are very uh, logical, common sense ideas and proposals. So, uh, to conclude the discussion, so what is the best outcome you can see coming out of this summit, Bruce? Well, uh, there'll probably be some statement of renewed. Uh, they've done a lot of this eternal friendship stuff in the past. It kind of mm-hmm. lo- loses some of its value after a while. But before it's worth, I imagine they will have some joint statement at the end that they invigorate cooperation in the region and explore new territories of, of interest where they can all get on board with something or the other. Uh, you know, for me, it would be enough if they would just if they would get along. And at the end of the meeting, agree that this is going to be something they're going to do on a regular basis, uh, annually, or even, you know, maybe even another one before the end of the year. Give Berdy Mukhamedov a chance to join the crowd. You know, maybe, you know, Farouk suggested that maybe this was just a bad time for him. So if they did it again in five or six months and all they could all agree on, that would be a good start for me. Okay. Bakit and Farouk, uh, briefly, please, on this question. Uh, this time is so important for them to get together to discuss, and uh, I uh, just uh, focus in my intention on the quality of discussion and the positions of uh, uh, countries, how we understand the whole situation in the region, and uh, how we would like to cooperate and just to improve the cooperation. This is important because you see the gap between the last meeting and this is upcoming meeting. Therefore, it's a, a timely uh, meeting. Central Asian leaders. Okay, Farouk, your thoughts on the potential? I, I don't. Outcome. I don't think there will be any kind of uh, earth-shattering agreement signed, mm. but I hope that it will be a, go- a very good start for a regional cooperation. Even if uh, these uh, four uh, presidents and the uh, head of the parliament gather around the Bish Barmak of, of friendship. I think it will be a very good start uh, for regional cooperation and regional integration. Yeah. Okay. 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 Nicely, nicely formulated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very nice ending. Thank you very much, Farouk, uh, Director of Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberties Turkmen Service, and, uh, and Master Bakit Pashimov, lecturer at the Northeastern Thank- University, and Bruce Panier, the editor of Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberties Central Asia blog, Kishlak Wazi. Thank you, colleagues, for uh, Thank you. Uh, for your time and thoughts today. Thank you very much. This is it from me, Mohamed Tahi, host of the Majlis Radio for Europe, Radio Liberty Central Asia podcast. Until next week, bye-bye.